if medicine is different from biology, from biochemistry, it's only because medicine is founded on the respect of the human being, of the human life. And if it is not, it is not any longer medicine, it is a kind of veterinary science to a particular biped species that we call man, and that's it. Medicine is not any longer totally hypocritic, is where is the danger? The danger is not at all in the technology. People are afraid of genetic manipulation. They say it's no good to know how the genes are working. It's very dull. It's very important we know that, because if we can understand how a bad gene is doing a bad job, we can either repair the bad job or repair the bad gene itself. We will do that soon. But the danger is that people will use human being, will exploit human being uh, for their own particular interests or their own particular research. That is totally against the Hippocratic medicine that is totally against medicine as we know it. But it's a new age biology applied to men. No doubt it's cheaper for the society to kill the patient than to cure the patient. It looks cheaper and maybe if you are counting dollars, maybe it's a little cheaper. But it's not that obvious because uh, you will lose the, the civilization. What measure the amount of civilization is the amount of respect given to the smallest of us. We know that to cure the disabled, and if we cannot cure them, to take care of them, it costs a lot of money, of dedication, of suffering of the parent, of the disturbance for the society. It's very true. But we know that price very precisely, the amount. It is the exact price we have to pay to remind you may. And if a society refused to pay that price, which is high, society is not humane any longer. And that will cost enormously. My personal impression, which is just the hypocritic line, is we are at the service of patients. We are not at the service of disease. So the people who propose to kill a, a Down syndrome baby in utero because they have detected that he was or she was Down syndrome are just making the enormous mistake of fighting for the disease against the patient. And medicine is a contrary. Medicine is a very simple application of knowledge. It is the hate of the disease and the love for the patient. You cannot change the two terms. In the fourth year of medicine, I became uh, acquainted with Down syndrome persons because the professor of pediatrics, Turpin, was interested in that disease. And I tried, I proposed when I began my research career, to try to find what was the cause of that very rare disease. And first I studied their palm prints, because palm prints are quite a snapshot of the first month's embryonic life. Uh, the palm prints begin to develop when the hand begins to develop, and at two months of age, in the tiny baby who is two, mil two centimeters and a half big from the crown to the rump, uh, you could, with a microscope, see the palm prints. They are already uh, printed there, very tiny. And that gives you the impression of how rapid is the uh, demonstration of the human, humanness of the human being. But, uh, this is very typical of Down syndrome. They have special crease and special feature. And that brought me to the conclusion, because those traits are made by many genes, that obviously no one gene could produce that change, but a change occurring on the action of many genes. 
And there is one trick to change the effect of many genes with one mutation is to change the whole chromosome. Then I proposed in there that they had a chromosomal disease. No one was known at that time. And I found that they had 47 chromosomes. And uh, I was expecting that they had one chromosome less. And I found that they had one extra. For the moment, we cannot silence this extra chromosome. But we can already understand what it does. We have around uh, six thousand files of Down syndrome babies that we know. I know personally two thousand of them by their first name, by their Christian name. And uh, we consult around two thousand a year here because we follow them. And uh, you have to realize that as geneticists interested in trying to help Down syndrome persons, uh, we are family doctors. Now, when the parents ask me what are the Down babies? My answer is, they are charming little babies. They are very delightful little ones. That's not the disease, it's a good disease. The disease is a bad disease. I, I hate it. But those babies have some languor, some tenderness, some uh, absence of rugosity, either in their form or in their character that they are very lovable. That's a fact. It's not fancy. Indeed, it's a terrible distress to the parents to know that the baby will not have the blossoming of the reason like they expected on any human being. But they will discover that reasoning, calculating, is one part only of mankind, and probably not the most precious. But they have a perfectly normal taste for art and for moral. They are normal morally, they are normal uh, artistically. It's a sizable portion of humanity to which they can give us lessons. If I had the power to suppress a disease, that is to prevent a chromosome number 21 to go the wrong way, and to have all the baby conceived with only two 21s instead of three in Down syndrome, surely I would apply that to protect all the babies. Now, I would say that surely the cost for a special school will be reduced if there were no Down syndrome baby alive, but the damage made to the heart of the society would be that great that maybe it would be very close uh, to what happened in Germany 50 years ago. People do not realize that, but as a doctor I see it. It's very possible to predict that a child has a disease. You can make mistakes, but uh, the diagnosis in utero can be rather efficient. But you cannot predict what would be the importance of that particular person uh, to his parents and to the society. Uh, to make you understand that, I will tell you a true story. It's an American doctor, Professor Vakani, who told me that. He's of Jewish ancestry. His father was a doctor in Austria. And one day, Varkani told me apart, and he told me, to you I will say that story. On the same night, in the little town in which my father was doctor, were born a little boy and a little girl, and two different families. The boy was very strong and crying very enormously. And the little girl had Down syndrome, and she had a very feeble cry. Now, the story is that the little girl, when she was 30 years of age, helped her mother, who had a stroke. And she was the only homekeeper. They were very poor people. And she was the homekeeper for her mother for three years. And this woman was treated very kindly by her retarded Down syndrome 
child. And the old doctor of uh, Australia could not remember the name of the little girl. But he had never forgotten the name of the boy. It was Adolf Hitler. This story is true. All the doctors coming here uh, know that here we are Hippocratic. We try to help the children. We fight against disease, against death. But on the side, same side as the patients. They know that. Otherwise, they would not come here. I try to map the chromosomes to see if there is an uh, anomaly uh, in them. We don't diagnose them uh, before, before the birth. Because at this moment now, we can't cure them. So when we diagnose them before the birth, it's to, um, to kill them. Very important work here, because it has implications for a lot of other areas of medicine, not just Down syndrome. Professor Lejean says here, you, you want to fight against disease, but love, but carry on caring for the people that are actually here. That's the ethos that we have in the clinic, I think. The day we will have a treatment in utero efficient for Down syndrome, we would be the very first on the in utero detection for the moment because we have no use uh, of that knowledge for the help of the baby, then we don't do it. Part of the doctors, of the MDs, those who have the diploma, uh, are not any longer exercising, exer practicing medicine. They are selectionists, uh, they are abortionists, and uh, they have taken responsibility which is beyond their wisdom. Man is not that wise that you can give matters of health and death in balance together. We have to be for health. And what is the foolishness of biologists, biologists pretending to uh, regent mankind is that they believe that God does not exist, but that they are God. And it's very ridiculous because if God does not exist, it cannot be God. <laughs>